Hey, how's it going? How's everyone doing? Hopefully I'm not too loud. Let me get this volume right. Music too loud? Got to see my levels. Hey, how's it going? Uh, man, things are off. Uh, that's what happens when you go to beta stuff. So yeah, I don't know if you saw my comment earlier, but man, I'm on like betas and pre-releases and dev builds of everything. This is <laughs> it's a little bit out of control, but how's it going? Happy Saturday. Uh, man, what are you guys working on? Uh, yeah, I'm curious. I, I know what I've been working on. I don't I don't even want to talk about it. I've been working on it for like eight days straight. <laughs> uh, let me see real quick. Let me just adjust my my headphones. They're not loud enough for me. There we go. There, that's a little bit better. So I have a better gauge of how loud I am. So I'm not just barking in your <laughs> barking in your ears. So how's it going? First up, uh, who was first? Speaking of first, Mathney was first. Mathney came in at, I don't know, half hour ago, <laughs> just said hi. I like it. I like the strategy there. I like the strategy. Um, and then really quick, uh, there were some follows uh, right before we started. So looks like Prof, Prof Exa, uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. How you doing? Um, hor hor oh man, tough words. Uh, Horgre, hor Horgreb. I'm going with that. EU. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. How you doing? Um, and then Saucy, Saucy, Saucy McMurder Burger. Hey, uh, interesting name. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. So, how are you guys doing? What are you working on? Happy Saturday. Hopefully, you're having more success on your projects than what I'm having with mine. I've been just like hitting a wall with like three things, and I, I don't really want to go too much into it unless you want to hear it. But, anyways, uh, if you want to hear, let me know. But yeah, it's um, it's been a crazy, I don't know, last eight days for me, just nonstop trying to get a couple of things to work, both on Windows and on Linux, and it's kind of. It's, it's driving me crazy. And then I had the crazy idea. I almost streamed from Linux today and I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not totally ready for that yet because my microphone, um, I, I would have to find an alternative for my microphone. But anyways, I, I did almost stream from Linux. I, I had the idea and I was like, no, there's, <laughs> it is not ready. I won't even be able to hear or talk uh, because of some audio driver issues. Uh, it's the bane of my existence on, on Linux. It's, it's always video or audio. And now, now, um, you know, since video card manufacturers are, you know, kind of playing along, um, it's audio. So audio is driving me crazy on, on Linux. So anyways, I've tried a few distributions. I think I have some ideas, but uh, anyways, yeah. So, uh, and, and that's not even what I'm working on. That's just getting like my platform ready to build the other thing that I'm working on. So, but you guys know how it is. You guys know how it is. So uh, Mr. Bonobo, hey, thanks for the fall. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, I will forewarn you, I, d I do need to cut out a little bit early today. It's in the title. I, I, I kind of, you know, put it in the title every now and then, but I set a reminder to remind myself because last time I said a short one, it was like the longest one ever. <laughs> and then I didn't realize what time it was. Uh, so anyways, um, Norout, hey, how's it going? Welcome. Thank you so much for, for being in here and being here early. Um, Norout, don't jinx it. Yeah, so I said earlier, like, uh, yeah, I'm running beta stuff and this could go south really quick. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, so far so good. I, I mean, you guys can hear me. I have, I have a little bit of background music. Uh, not entirely sure if my lights are working cause I broke something <laughs> in Kubernetes. I, I hope they are, uh, but we'll see. Um, Gigafied. Hey, good. How's it going? Uh, Smindy, Sm SMN Hindi. Uh, good evening. How? Yeah. Lights are working. Thanks for, thanks for testing them someone. I didn't mean to get you to spend the points, but, uh, I could have clicked the button myself, but. Thank you. I, I know I know I have a couple other things in Kubernetes down to like just internal pods that I'm not really using all that much, but huh, that's in the back of my head too. Um, hey, hey, Saucy McMurder Burger, Saucy McMurder Burger. Hey, thanks for the thanks for the sub. Appreciate it. Subscribe, Prime. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah, no lights are working. All right, that's one last thing to fix tonight. <laughs> um, but yeah, so man, what what are you guys up to? What are you working on? Um, uh, Raspy, Kabik, uh, good evening, good morning, everyone. How's it going? Uh, Mor Morvia, hello, everyone. How are you? Um, Lucan, Lucan Kratas, hey, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hey, man, they're just rolling in. Uh, I'm gonna go with MBK. MBK, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. How you doing? Thanks for the follow. Um, 
Ah, uh, Jmo, Jmu, hello everyone. Hi, yeah, how's it going? Uh, PC Geek, upgrading firmware on the One U server. Nice, man. Uh, how's that going for you? I know that you've been, uh, you know, you, you got a w new One U server. I think you were uh, a little bit off put by the, the noise on the fans, but I think you got that wrangled. Uh, and now upgrading the firmware? Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan. I mean, you guys know I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of One U's. Not a huge fan of the noise, but uh fortunately mine are mine are pretty quiet and there's there's some things you could do to mitigate noise too um but yeah i'm i'm a fan uh mainly because i get two and then uh if i ever downsize i can just get rid of one um sm hindi i'm gonna go with smindy that's easier to say uh saturday night scotch and hand planning world domination all right all right man scotch whoo Ooh, I'm just getting like the chills thinking about it. Just taking one sip of that. I'd, I'd be, oh, I'd be so hot and taking off my hat and probably my sweatshirt because I, I get hot when I drink. Uh, not that I really ever do, but um, Matney, nothing really. How's it going? <laughs> nothing really. So not working on anything really? That's okay. That's totally fine. That's that's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, Raspy Kabik, oh man, enjoying and testing uh, some Docker containers, uh, the Grid 4, of selenium haha -ha. whoa man uh yeah awesome uh selenium is 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 awesome what it does um but it can be a bear to configure so oh i i mean i'm excited for you to get it working i'm not excited for you to get it configured <laughs> i used to run uh, uh some of my functional tests so you know uh, i i when i build uis i'd write some functional tests against selenium do a whole a whole bunch of other uh test automation with it where it would drive the browser for me with with the web driver oh but it was never fun to get working but awesome once you got it working uh voyo voyo kate's on proxmox all right kubernetes on proxmox that sounds like sounds like you got your weekend cut out for you <laughs> it might take a while we'll see um gigafied next up sound isolation the heck out of it nice yeah uh oh i skipped over that so you're building a a, a server rack out of wood awesome that's awesome so custom build that's sweet. And then, yeah, sound isolation. I need to work on that too. So let me know which way you go. Cause I, I have an open frame rack and uh, my open frame rack is just, uh, just noise everywhere. Air comes from everywhere, which is totally fine. But I, I would love uh, at some point to put on some paneling and then uh, put in some, you know, some sound isolation as well as uh, some noise isolation too. And, and, and restrict the airflow and make it come in from the front out from the back. Not that it's really, you know, coming in the sides. Uh, but I'd like a more streamlined approach. Um, to my air. Hey, Easton. Oh, that's loud. Sorry about that. Easton, how's it going, man? Dude, Easton, um, 200 bits. All right, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. Um, PC Geek, uh, got Git T Jenkins set up locally for my code. Nice, man. So you got some CI going. Uh, no luck on webhooks. I know we were talking about, but I think it's the best uh, so I can verify my code works before it tries to build an image. Uh, that fails anyways yeah yeah for sure um yeah if you if you need some yeah bounce some ideas off me i know we were talking about it a little bit yesterday um but yeah i i've done a ton of ci stuff with custom code as, as you know but if you need some help let me know i i could probably even share some of my own personal pipelines i know i have one on github you know that's super generic but shows the basic steps but if you need a more full featured one i could share some of my my personal code uh uh, uh, CI pipelines for sure. Cause it's, it's nothing secret. <laughs> it just saves people from time from having to figure it out themselves. Uh, Mr. Bonable, I'm currently trying to replace my Unraid with K3S. Whoa, there's a, there's a big switch. Uh, but your video about traffic V1, unfortunately, uh, and I think V2 brings new features regarding. So currently I'm trying to understand how to apply that. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's tough. Uh, I, I won't, uh, I'll say that. Um, you know, what I will say is unless you need those features for V2, I mean, V1's totally fine. Um, you know, V2 does bring a lot of features. It brings more load balancer like features um, for both, uh, you know, TCP, a different layer of the networking stack. So you're not only uh, just parsing headers uh, and using it as a what layer four, I want to say, or is that seven? Um, but um, yeah, it, it, if you're thinking about going um, if you're thinking about going with traffic V2, I, 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 I can share my config. I know we've been talking about it a lot in discord. Um, but I, I've been doing it with K3S rancher, um, and then traffic 
v2 and helm to install it all um so so if you're watching that video that's mostly ui uh you know all from a gui if you're thinking about going to two uh then most likely it's going to be mostly terminal and mostly yaml so if you're comfortable with that yeah hop in our hop in our discord or mention in discord in the containerization uh channel and yeah, we, we, we've kind of solved it. A, a couple of people have had success. And I, I, I keep saying I'm going to put together a more, um, you know, comprehensive guide on how to do it. I just, to be honest, I, I haven't had the time. <laughs> I, I, I need to prioritize that. Um, but a um, but, uh, few people have gotten working, and it and it's, uh, seems to be working out okay. Um, Palace Media, hey, how's it going? Good to see you, man. I, I want to say hi, yes. And I know we talked about that before. Dude. Uh, Hob, Hob, Hogreb, EU, dude, thanks for the, thanks for the sub, Prime sub, thank you so much, appreciate it, appreciate it. Uh, Palace, how's it going, man? Uh, Takano, hey yo, man, how you doing? Hope you're doing okay. Um, all funeral, uh, funerals are all done, back to normal. Dude, again, condolences, man, hope you're doing better. I, 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 I know it's not the old normal, but it's the new normal, and hopefully, um, you've had, you know, um, yeah, you find some peace, uh, and I apologize, man. Um, but yeah, let me know if you need anything, Discord, dude. Uh, Gigafy, Git T plus drone equals good tier. I I agree, I agree. Uh, I mean, I haven't, you know, I don't I don't run uh, Git T at home. I've seen it, I understand it, and it looks awesome. Um, and I think it's one of the best self-hosted options out there uh, for source control and you know lightweight project management stuff that you get. Um, you know, usually with source control type systems uh totally awesome yeah and i'm I, i'm a huge fan of drone i've been a fan of drone for a long time um we did a company i worked at a lot of people were like oh a drone but i'm like yeah it's, <laughs> i i'm, I'm kind of showing my my preferences but prior to that we were running jenkins and it was jenkins v1 not v2 with docker containers and everything so i was like hey at least it's not jenkins and see that's a point in time reference because at the time we were running jenkins one which was just like you know, local dependencies, no Docker containers, nothing. And so anyways, um, I'm a huge fan of drone because uh, it was one of the first ones that I've seen that did um, CI inside of Docker. Um, and then, you know, GitLab, I, I don't know if they fork drone or whatever, I'm probably making this up, but their GitLab YAML, the runners, uh, use the same exact syntax, same YAML files, uh, almost exactly. So it's, uh, I felt right at home. Uh, anyways, yeah, I, I totally agree. I should maybe host Git T sometime, uh, but all my code's in the cloud. Hopefully, it's safe. <laughs> uh, JMO, uh, I'm gonna go with JMO. Now I'm gonna go with JMO. Uh, I'm trying to troubleshoot my Rancher server for a while now and trying to find a way to use my new one gig fiber internet connection uh, to its full potential. Nice, man. Dude, one gig internet connection. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that's tough. You know, that's tough because, you know, uh, I mean, you, you guys know this, but, you know, uh, you know, your, your bandwidth. Um, um, yeah. So one gig, you, got, you might have a hard time finding anyone that can push one gig to you. I mean, obviously, you'll have big companies like, you know, Microsoft, Google, Steam, Epic, you know, game downloads, you know, PlayStation, maybe uh, you know, uh, agreed with maybe with Xbox, too. But you have a hard time trying to find someone that's gonna be able to push one gig to you. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, but it sounds awesome. And then, I th you know, next bottleneck is gonna be, can your system write to disks fast enough? But uh, super, super interesting, happy for you. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on with your rancher server, let me know, let me know if uh, maybe I can point you in the right direction. Uh, Smindy, uh, be good to talk about PFSense getting WireGuard native support. Yeah, I, I saw that too. So they, they kind of had two back-to-back -back announcements and I, th I think they were planned. You know, they, uh, <laughs> so there, there's two things here. I mean, you know, the beta of PFSense is going to get, I think, WireGuard. Um, and then there's the other one, the PFSense Plus, which is interesting as well. And it's funny how those kind of came out, you know, close together. Um, because one can be perceived as good and one can be perceived as maybe not as good. I'll say that. <laughs> so yeah, it's super awesome. I, I knew this was coming. I, I, I've been saying it for a year. I'm like, man, why isn't PFSense done yet? Obviously, they, you know, I, I'm, I'm not like, you know, uh, being critical of them at all. Um, but being, you know, kind of the leader in this open, sport, open source network firewall space, I, I, you know, I thought we would have been there already. <laughs> 
But anyways, yeah, I'm super happy uh, for them and for, um, you know, WireGuard coming soon on PFSense, I guess, beta. Uh, I think it's still a beta. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's interesting and, it, and it's awesome. And uh, yeah, I'll have to take a hard look at it. Thinking about running PFSense again, just behind my other firewall, just because, just to get WireGuard, just forward all the ports there, but that might be kind of confusing. Um, Gigafied, uh, good combo. Uh, mic and music, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah, I noticed this is up a little bit high. I'm standing a little bit further back, so I'll point this down. There we go. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, huge fan of this mic. A lot of people ask about this mic. It's Rode Pop mic. Um, it was 99 bucks, it's an XLR mic. I love it. It, it, it's fantastic. I wish I could use it in my YouTube videos, but I, I have another mic up here that I use and it's, it's mainly for aesthetics um, because I don't want this big thing in front of my face. Maybe I should at some point, uh, cause this gives, uh, this helps with a lot of sound. I got a lot of echoes in here and I actually have a friend who hooked me up with some sound uh, isolation type stuff that I'm gonna put up here soon. Uh, I've been, been super busy, so I haven't been able to do that. Anyways, long story short, uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of this mic. If you're interested, I have a gear link below. Um, if you stream, if you podcast, if you do anything, if you want to sound really good on your Zoom call meetings, this is the mic for sure. Because <laughs> my, my, you know, my voice is is kind of like this, but this like really brings out like the the chest part of my voice. Uh, it, uh, this mic always makes me sound like I, I just woke up or I kind of have a cold or just getting over one, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and then music, of course, Stream Beats, Harris Heller. I, I talk about it all the time. Like, I'm so pleased with his his music and his uh, business he has going on now. And uh, super happy uh, for him, for his channel, for all the things he's got, you know, in store. And I'm excited for it, too. And uh, yeah, music is fantastic, too. And I, I handpicked, like, I don't know, 30, 40 songs that I love that I, every stream I just play them because I'm like, man, this is, one, it's DMCA free. Uh, and two, they're, they're good. They're good. I don't know. They're good. I don't know. Um, but thank you. Uh, Pizza Geek voice is a little bit quiet. I'm talking a little bit louder. So let me know. And I did some tweaking. So maybe, maybe I've adjusted it since then. Um, Smindy, all good. All right. Yeah. Uh, and maybe now how to set up Proxmox cluster with your host already have VMs. Um, yeah, that one's tough. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can. Oh, you can. I did it. Um, so you can, um, but you can't. So, so your question is, how do I set up a Proxmox cluster if my hosts, you said plural, already have VMs and you said plural. So I'm going to answer that one. Um, you can, but, um, the, the, the only gotcha is the new host that you're trying to adopt, um, can't have any VMs. Um, and maybe it's vice versa. Maybe it's the other way around, but the, but the moral is of the story is that, you know, one, you're either your new system, or your old system, I can't remember which one of them can't have any VMs. And so I think it's the new one. So every new one you join can't have any VMs at all. Otherwise, you can't join the cluster. Um, and I ran into that myself. And so what I ended up doing was because I had two systems and I started building it out before I joined the cluster. And it's like, you know, Proxmox doesn't want you to do that. And I get it. Uh, so so what I ended up doing uh, was moving some of those VMs, just doing a backup to NFS and then a restore from NFS and actually get all the VMs onto one. And then once your new uh, Proxmox node uh, that you want to join to your Proxmox cluster uh, doesn't have any VMs, uh, then you should be able to join it uh, pretty easily. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what I ended up doing. And then once you have them in a cluster, you don't have to do the NFS backup and restore. You can actually do a live migration, which is super awesome, which is the whole reason why I got clusters going. Uh, it wasn't for HA, it was for live migration. But yeah, yeah, let me know if that helps. Um, Palace Media, project-wise, nothing changed since last time. Currently working on saving up for SSDs for my R710. Yeah, we talked about that, about six of them. Uh, sadly, I can't stay long, gotta get back to work, but I hope you have a great weekend. Hey, thanks, Palace dude, appreciate it, man. Uh, hope, you, hope you find some decent SSDs for your R710. I think we were talking about six last time. <laughs> But good luck, man. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Really appreciate it. Uh, Gearshift 180. Hello. I'm starting a new website. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. What are you building it in? Uh, are you using a CMS system like Ghost or WordPress? Or you building your own with React or Vue or Django or you name it? 
Um, and then if you are, are you are you separating the 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 two um, domains? I guess you should say out. Are you doing front end back end, or are you doing uh, server side rendering all back end, and then rendering the display for the front end? Let me know because those are interesting questions for sure. Um, but GearShift, yeah, congrats on the new website. Let me know. I'm curious. Smindy, uh, I've been working on moving 120,000 users from Skype to Teams and moving 1.5 billion uh, B bytes. Uh, that's not bytes. Uh, B, uh, b, 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 I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, I don't know. 1.5 B something. I'm going to go with, uh, I think that's, uh, I'll go with gigabytes. I don't know. Uh, no, that would be too small. Terabytes uh, of data. Uh, from box to one trip. Wow. Going all in with Microsoft. I mean, Skype is already Microsoft, but teams and then moving from box to one drive, man, that's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, good luck on that. Curious how you validate that stuff. Uh, you know, I'm always curious. It's one thing to do it. Um, but it's another to validate and make sure it works. So I'm curious how, how you validate, uh, your box to one drive migration. Do you scan all the folders? Do you hash them? What do you do? Uh, or do you just have a report and the report tells you on, on OneDrive? Because that would be even awesome. Let them do it, right? They're, you're paying for that. Uh, Crasher. Uh, Crasher Dehorn. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Smindy. Uh, and at home, I bought a new NAS waiting for it to arrive. So backing up all the things. Awesome. Yeah, new NAS. What'd you buy? Is it uh, when you say you bought a NAS, I assume you meant you, you, you're buying a, a pre-configured or a store-bought one. Uh, or is it um, roll your own? because both are interesting. Uh, I agree, sounds like fun. Uh, no route, uh, migrating my mail server and DNS, everything went smooth for a change, sorta. Awesome, congratulations. I can't even imagine migrating a mail server. Uh, hopefully there's, I, I'm sure there's pretty decent tooling uh, that, that will help you do that. Um, but man, that, that's that gotta be tough. Um, and again, you, you know, how, how do you validate those things? How, how do you ensure that, you know, hey, uh, it worked? Cause that's, that's always the scary part for me. It's one thing to do it. And then it's another thing to like validate you did it. I mean, maybe that's why, you know, I, I like testing as far as software development's concerned. I like to test, I like to write tests when I can. Um, so yeah, how, how do you assert that that worked? <laughs> and DNS server, uh, uh, migrating DNS servers. What did you go from and to curious about that? Sorry. So part of the raspiness isn't just this microphone. It's actually my, my throat. <laughs> um, PC Geek, uh, welcome. Be sure to check out our Discord. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm glad my, my uh, code that now parses all the message and looks for a command within the message works. I, I think you guys, you and uh, Ilu tested it last time. But yeah, the great suggestion. Thank you. Um, Raspy Kabik, uh, what are you using for a mail server? I started uh, I started some investigation uh, to see what I can host for some of my domains. Yeah, I, I have the same question. Home Lab New, wow, is this the least I've ever received? This is the latest I've ever received a stream notification. Whew, wow, that, that was a while back. Um, I'm, I'm glad they were still sent out. <laughs> I'm glad they're still sent out. And that's why I have some stuff, you know, set up in Discord. If, if you opt into that, obviously it's opt in. Uh, because who knows if Twitches really go out, just like YouTube's. I have no idea if they really work. I should have a secondary account and sign up for my own stuff and turn on notifications, but I, you know, I don't. Um, so I, I just cross my fingers on notifications, but my Discord is a way to, to opt in. And there's some tooling coming, coming soon, a new app and service that can help with that too. So yeah, it's Mindy. Uh, Redoing all my security policies from my own Office 365, uh, from my own Office 365 tenants. Oh man, security policies. What new policies? What are you putting in place? Uh, are you, I assume you're getting, moving data around and data has different kinds of classification within Office 365. And then you're probably applying policies either to people or to, uh, or to, um, to, to, to folders? Yeah, curious about that. Data classification, security, super interesting. Um, let's see, uh, Home Lab New, what are you using to capture camera feed in Linux? Like what HDMI cable device? Yeah, yeah. Um, Home Lab New, yeah, good question. Um, so I have uh, um, 
Uh, we've talked about Elgato stuff before, and I, I, I'm a huge fan. Uh, but I needed more than Elgato when I, when I started taking streaming seriously. So I bought this Blackmagic device uh, that's an HDMI input, and it takes four inputs. It's also in the gear links, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just saying if you want to actually look at the device. Um, and so that has four HDMI inputs, and um, they luckily released Linux drivers. But the funny thing is, two days ago, three days ago, I don't know, some, some amount of days ago that were in this week, um, I actually went and installed them. They did not work. And I was like, oh, you know, oh, here we go again, you know? And I think I was, I was venting, uh, you know, I'm, at least to myself, just about how, you know, I wish that driver support was, was better in Linux. Not their fault. Um, um, but then I checked this morning and they released an update for it. So anyways, I use, uh, so Blackmagic makes um, DaVinci Resolve. Um, they also make awesome cameras, awesome hardware. Um, so I bought one of their input devices, uh, Quad, Quad, it's called Decklink Quad or something like that. It's by Blackmagic. Um, does four inputs. I have only two hooked up right now, sometimes three. Sometimes I'll plug in my mobile device and put it on the screen. That's how you see it in some of my demos most of the time. Um, and so fortunately, they released a driver that works with Ubuntu 20.04 um, just a couple of days ago. And they released the full GUI application. Like, that, it's so awesome that they, they did all that. And when you launch the GUI application, I mean, it doesn't do, I, I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 you know it, it does a lot. Um, but the GUI wise, um, it's, it's pretty simple. It just tells me what type of device is plugged into which port. Um, and then on top of that, it'll tell me what it's connected at, the frame rate and all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool. They're not cheap, but you might be able to find a single port or a quad core, um, dual, you know, dual port, quad core. I can't even talk today. Hey, Jack, Jack Bancast. Hey, Jack at Bancast. Hey, thanks for the raid and host. Appreciate it. Welcome. How you doing? How was your stream? Um, so anyways, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm. I'm glad I made that decision, um, and, and don't get me wrong, the, the Elgato ones are fantastic, but they don't offer a lot of, you know, dual ports. And then they did offer, they might offer a dual port, um, but then I was like, okay, if I, what happens if I need three? You know, I, I was thinking long term, and so I, I made an investment early on to buy a quad port um, so that I don't have to keep shuffling around HDMI. And I thought, well, I have two cameras plus a mobile device right then and there. I, I've exceeded two. Uh, so, anyways, uh, great Linux support from them. I'm, I'm, I'm fan. I'm, I was so relieved when I installed it uh, about an hour ago, and I saw that the the, the new version actually worked. Funny, they didn't even have a beta. They had a beta of the old version and then a brand new version. No beta for the new version, but I was just like, is it gonna work? And sure enough, as soon as I installed it with the app, I was like, oh yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, I got some cool stuff. Um, you know, I cool stuff planned. Like like I said earlier, I, I, I wanted to do uh, this stream in Linux. I think I will be ready for it um, on Thursday. And it, it, you know, it's nothing special. You might not notice anything different, but it's you know kind of a technical challenge for me to see if I can. This probably won't be working. I, I can say without a doubt that my GoXR LR will not work, but I have another audio mixer that may. So anyways, um, yeah, I, uh, and all of this stemmed from something else that I've been working on for eight days. So I, <laughs> Oh, it's, it's driving me crazy. I think about it all day, all night. And, you know, I'm, I'm like one step away from getting it working. And then that's just the beginning. Once I get this thing working, then I actually need to create my content. So anyways, uh, long story short, um, yeah, Blackmagic devices have pretty good Linux support, which I was surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, but it makes sense. They sell very high-end, you know, gear, uh, high-end recording equipment and high-end uh, video editing software uh, that also runs on Linux. So, it, you know, it just makes sense that they their drivers um, are also um, supported on Linux. But yeah, uh, Smindy, uh, all looking good. Smindy, Simon, that's right, Simon. I'm gonna remember it, Simon, Simon. Uh, throw an eye in there, note to self. Uh, Swedish, uh, I made my first full stack app, nice. Now I'll learn about deployment and get it live. Nice. So full stack. So you wrote the client, wrote the backend, and then wrote the back backend or the, the persistent storage or data, your database, basically. 
um, and then figuring out how to deploy and get it live. Nice. Uh, when you say full stack app, um, do you mean like a, a, a native mobile app and then, you know, a back end with whatever and then and then your database? Or do you mean like a web app? Both are fine. Uh, I've done a ton of CI. If you have problems, ping me uh, in Discord or something or on Twitter, I can point you to some resources. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I build all of my code, uh, even the bot that's in here. I, I, I build it with CI and it gets deployed. So I, I was, that was it's kind of how I got into Rancher is because I wanted to build and deploy and containerize my code at home. That's, that's how I got into Rancher because I was like, who's going to give me this the easiest? And I was like, oh, oh, I, I can get Docker kind of with the UI. This was Rancher one days, uh, but then I can get orchestration too. And I was like, yeah, sign me up. Um... Sub high, yeah, man. Maphne, points are to be used. Yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, going back into the points. I, I agree, I agree. But you know, sometimes it's it's a nice little flex when you know you're like, I got 20k points. I'm like, oh yeah, thanks, appreciate it. Uh, J J Van the man. Uh, I tried to install Kubernetes on a Proxmox cluster, but ran into issues with LXC. Uh, so I might just install the services directly in LXCs and make use of the Proxmox HA instead of. Kubernetes HA. Yeah, um, totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah, totally fine. Um, I, I think if you if you go, so a couple of things. One, um, I think I think uh, PC Geek has figured it out on, on how to make uh, K3S at least run within LXC containers. Um, and you will get, you know, e either way you're going to get HA. I do think though, if you if you go that route, you won't get you know, custom containers or Docker container HA, you're gonna basically get virtual machine HA with LXE containers, if that makes sense. The slight, you know, it's nuanced there. Um, and then you don't really get the orchestration piece, you just get Proxmox just making sure that, that your one thing is alive. Um, but yeah, sounds awesome. Um, but I, I think you can get K3S running in LXE. If not, you know, obviously it runs in virtual machines for sure. Uh, PC Geek, huge fan of one use, no pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> missed opportunity there, missed opportunity. Uh, CB, uh, boy, boy, UK, uh, CD boy. Uh, I've been working on a ham sandwich. <laughs> oh, all right, after that, I'm gonna work on a chocolate bar. I like it, yeah, uh, let me know. It's been a while since I had a ham sandwich. I could go for one. Grandpa loved ham sandwiches. Um, uh, <laughs> Guabaro, I, I used to, I, I used to be better at pronouncing this one. Um, uh, did did something today you don't do every day? Updating firmware on a soldering iron? Whoa, that's crazy! I, I didn't even think soldering irons had firmware, but that's that sounds really awesome. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of firmware for some reason. Like I like this low level piece of software that sometimes gets updated. I I've always gotten excited about firmware upgrades. I have no idea why. My, when my router had firmware upgrades, when my light bulb has firmware upgrades, I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, and I have no idea why. I, I just always have. Um, software updates, obviously, and, and arguably firmware is, is software too. But firmware is a, it's on a whole nother level. You know, you mess that up, the machine's not going to work. The device may or may not work. But yeah, always been a huge fan. I, I always get excited. I don't know why. I don't know why, <laughs> but that's interesting that uh, that your soldering iron has firmware. I'm trying to think of the weirdest or the oddest place for firmware that I've updated. Um, and I I think soldering iron would totally, totally take the cake for me. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think like, you know, obviously uh, cameras, microphones, stream decks, uh, my headphones, uh, phone, you know, routers. But a soldering iron? I like it. I mean, I like it. And, you know, another reason why I always like updates or, or firmware updates, like I, I'm never, you know, I might complain about updates sometimes. But at the end of the day, like I love updates because it means someone cares and someone still cares about that product, that software product. And so if someone's going to push updates and sure it might break stuff or might add stuff I don't want, at the end of the day, it means someone still cares about that thing. And, uh, you know, where I would start to worry is when I stopped getting updates for that thing. It either means a new version's coming out or they're not doing too well. <laughs> or the thing works perfect, which we all know is is not usually the case. Um, Thomas, Thomas, Hoodle, Hodel, trying to get a Mastodon instance 
working over here. <laughs> hey, Tim, you're a legend. Hey, thanks. I hope you get Mastodon working. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, JJ Van, the man. Uh, I, I know very little about Mastodon. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. Mastodon? Mastodon. Uh, I, I've read about it. People have linked to it. Uh, but yeah, I hope you get it running for sure. Um, Saucy McMurder Burger. Uh, Tim, have you checked out Tyson? I have not checked out Tyson. I had no idea what Tyson is. Tell me more. Uh, Gigafied, uh, PC Geek Gigafied. Uh, what I'm going to do too, uh, we'll build an enclosed rack. Yeah, for sure. I Let me know what you guys settle on. I want to see parts and I want to see the process too. I, I love seeing the process, what goes into it. Um, yeah, my server rack is in the bedroom. So if I want more servers, I have to make it quiet. Yeah, you have a, you have some white noise going on in there. Yeah, some, some stuff to put you to sleep. You know, nothing like server rack fans to 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 whisk you away to <laughs> to sleep uh but yeah, yeah i mean now it's it's pretty critical i mean i'm i'm not sensitive to that type of noise i am sensitive to other weird noises like house creaking and cracking or ice maker in the middle of the night i'm like who's breaking in my house but like aloha i'm a fan no i love it i, I actually love it um Corpo, Corpo Chexer, I, I'm so sorry on your name. Hey man, I uh, found you on YouTube today, you're an absolute beast, tons of respect for what you're doing. Appreciate it, thank you, thanks for stopping in. I appreciate you coming all the way over from YouTube to, to say it, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going with Corpo, Corpos, I'm gonna stop there because after that it gets a little, you know, challenging for me to pronounce. Appreciate it. Uh, no route, Drone CI is great too, I totally agree. Yeah, Drone CI, I'm, I'm all for it. All right, I love these plus ones for Drone. Yeah, I'm a huge fan, I've been a fan for a while. And uh, like I said, like a lot of people were used to Jenkins around that time, you know, it was a point in time and they didn't want to change. I'm like, no, we need, <laughs> I, I need to change because I don't want to have to worry about some, you know, some library installed locally on this build server. And now I can't build my software until you go update Java or update whatever node uh, not the case anymore, obviously, with Jenkins 2. Uh, but when Jenkins 1 was out and Drone was a competitor, that that's what, you know, uh, I was up against. You know, build on the old build server and have to worry about all these local dependencies being installed, Ruby being the right version, or just use a Docker image during build and say, I'll bring my own dependencies. And I'm a, I'm a BYOD person. Bring your own dependencies. Uh, PC Geek, uh, I do like the idea, but I just want to make sure that the code isn't broke first. Uh, I think that requires writing tests, or do you run some stuff locally on the dev machine before pushing an update to Git? Good question, because this goes into unit testing uh, versus functional testing or or end-to-end -end testing. Uh, me, personally, I, 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 I do both. So I... I, I I mo uh, let me reel this back. Most of the time I just do unit tests, right? Does my code or this, you know, unit of code or block of code do what I want it to do? So PC Geek, if you're thinking about like your, 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 you have a function, I assume this is for your Discord bot or, or a Twitch bot or something like that, where you have, uh, 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 where you parse a command, where you're like, hey, let me parse a command out of this sentence or the string. And so I would typically write a unit test for that. Uh, one, I would assert that the thing works, and then two, assert that the thing doesn't work in some scenarios. And so I would write a unit test to say, like like, like we did uh, the new command for Discord. I would I would uh, you know write a unit test that exercises that piece of code that then returns a value. So I would say, hey, you know whatever um, this this parser uh, for for the Discord command. I would give it some text and say, you know, I would assert this to return true if it finds, you know, discord in the sentence. And then I usually test the opposite too. I'm, I'm doing a, you know, a very terrible way of explaining this. I should probably show you in code. Um, but but I do write unit tests and that's what I, that's what I test during CI. If you wanted to go uh, a little bit further, like an end-to-end -end test or, you know, a functional test, then you can actually spin it up and actually run the thing and then assert things while it's running. Uh, where unit test is actually using a testing framework to test bits of code. End-to-end um, -end testing is actually spinning it up in its own environment, doing some things and then making sure it works. And that's a little bit harder with Discord, right? I mean, you could do it. You could have a test channel that had, you know, that you spun up the bot, set something in the test channel. And let's say, for instance, you were testing to make sure that it was removing links um, you would send in, you know, with a bot or something else, 
send in a, a, a link into that channel and then with something else, you know, whatever you're listening with, you would assert that that link got removed from the channel. That's way, that, I mean, if you're gonna do end-to-end -end stuff, I mean, it's a lot of work. Um, but unit test is, is a great first step. And uh, yeah, I do that in CI, it's part of, it's like first step, uh, well, kind of first step. Um, I won't go too far into this, but generally in CI, you want things to fail fast. And what do I mean by fail fast? It's, you don't wanna wait to find out that something's broken that's easy to find at the end, right? And so typically what I do in, in JavaScript testing when I run it in CI, you know, I, I won't run my full suite integration test until last, right? Because that's gonna take a long time to spin up and it's gonna do a lot of different things and it, you know, um, where there are other things that could fail earlier. And so typically I say lint first, you know, cause that's easy. That's a real quick static check. Like, is there any lint? If there's any lint, it fails. Um, then I'll just do a quick uh, build real quick on the, on, uh, uh, on the JavaScript project. Just build it real quick. Cause that's fairly quick too. And then next I'll run a unit test and then I'll run end to end tests. And so in general, you know, I, I wouldn't put my linting last because if I, you know, didn't have a semicolon or had a semicolon, however you write your code, I wouldn't want to find out about that five minutes later. Like I'd want to find out about that at, you know, zero seconds as soon as the CI spun up and ran that. But anyways, yeah, so that's the idea is fail fast. If you're going to layer on a lot of testing like that. Uh, I went on a long tangent on that, but I'm, I'm super passionate about that kind of stuff. Um, Let's see, no route. Yep, me too. Uh, been loving it ever since uh, chat recommended it. I think this is about drone. Nice, yeah. Um, let's see, I uh, got to skip through these comments. Uh, Palace, I generally run unit tests first, and if it's all good from there, uh, run locally to verify everything work uh, as expected to be pushing to get. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, and you can run those unit tests locally. I mean, typically that's where you run them first. It's just nice to then run them in CI on a third party system, you know, so so you can't just say, hey, it works on my machine, right? That's that's where CI comes in. CI is the tiebreaker, you know? Someone says, works on my machine. The other person says, doesn't work on my machine. CI is the tiebreaker. And that's, uh, you know, your CI, if you run your test there, it's a, it's, it's a good tiebreaker. And then I, I treat it like, uh, you know, source of truth for my, for my test. Cause, you know, environments, you know, local dev environments, change or people do different things or use different versions of dependencies and yeah yeah ci is the way to go for that um uh luke and kratos uh when i use bind mounts and when i use name volumes for docker containers oh when do you use bind mounts and when do you use named volumes for docker containers you use bind mounts in most of the videos uh in case i keep docker compose file and i am deploying on a variety of machines then name volumes uh makes more sense right yeah yeah um, yes. <laughs> so name volumes are, are, are definitely nice for Docker. I know that's the Docker way is to keep your volume in another Docker container or Docker volume. Um, I, you know, in my videos, I, I do use bind mounts a lot because it's easy and because it's the lowest common denominator for a lot of people who are starting. Do I use bind mounts now in my environment? No, zero. <laughs> um, did I before in the past? Absolutely. It was a good intro. Um, but, um, like I said, the, the, the reason I do bind mounts in there is because it's the lowest common denominator. It doesn't take anything else other than, you know, writing some files uh, on a local path uh, on that node. And so, you know, uh, is it the best way to do it? Uh, depends. Um, you know, is it the most robust way to do it? No. Um, but, um, you know, as you advance and do other things in Kubernetes or K3S, you can decide on which kinds of storage classes you want to add to Kubernetes. You know, I had one talking about Longhorn and I, I'm a huge fan of the NFS client provisioner. I use that as well, which gives you NFS mounts uh, through a storage class in Kubernetes. Now, that's super confusing. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you, you want to abstract that storage um, from, from the node, right? And, and when you bind mount directly to a node, to a file system on a server, you're not abstracting that at all, right? That's a, that's a hard dependency saying these files must be on this server, right? And um, if you're saying that, that, that works if you only have one server, but as soon as you go to two, that doesn't work. Unless you do some other things like say, okay, on every server, we're gonna have this file path. But at that point, you should probably look into something else. Um, 
So anyways, there are so many ways you can do storage in Kubernetes. Um, and uh, I want to make sure I answered, I guess, uh, the, the meat of your question, um, which is, you know, bind mount versus name volumes and name volumes in Docker. If you're familiar with those, absolutely use them. Um, and if you're planning on expanding uh, more than one node uh, in your Kubernetes cluster, a K3S cluster, when I say K3S, I mean, you know, I'm, I use them interchangeably. So don't think when I say K Kates or Kubernetes, I exclude K3S, I include it because it's actually a distribution of Kubernetes, but it just has a different acronym. Anyways, long story short, uh, when, I, when I say Kubernetes, I also am including K3S. Uh, but anyways, um, if you're expanding beyond one node, I would highly recommend into looking into a more robust storage solution. And um, if you don't want to go all in with Longhorn, takes a lot of resources, I get it. Um, NFS Client Provisioner is fantastic. It's fantastic. Like, it, it, it's, it's rock solid. Um, JJ Van the Man, uh, which channel would I ask about Apache HTTPS proxy? Oh, uh, yeah, good question. Uh, ooh, networking? I'm not sure. Networking or infrastructure? I'll, I'll put it there. Um, but it's it's really up to your discretion. Like, um, you know, whatever whatever you think's best. Um, whatever channel you think's best. Uh, you know, you could ask it in general as long as it doesn't have links. Um, doesn't matter. It's um, channels are not a way to enforce something. It's a way for people to to discover content. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, if you post, if you talk about anything in general, you know, I, you know, I, again, it's like, so this is about discord. Um, the way I look at channels is more like hashtags. And so if you were looking for a hashtag on TikTok or Twitter, right, you would get content related to that. And that's how I look at the channels. It's really not an enforcement. It's really just to help people discover content uh, within our discord. And so I, you know, I, I think they put hashtags on the channels for a reason, uh, is because I think they want to do that too. And I, you know, Slack does that. I think they, they started that who knows. Uh, but yeah, anywhere, anywhere is fine. Yeah, just use your best judgment. Um, and then I will say, if you want someone to find that content later, then yeah, choose, choose one of those channels too. Cause that, that makes it easier to find later. Things get buried in different channels. So <laughs> Um, but yeah, thanks, thanks for asking too ahead of time. I, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, Nero, hello, how's it going? Easton, just kind of lurking today, trying to get my office in order. Uh, starting back in the local state school Monday. All right, yeah, back. we're getting back on track. Kind of getting back on track, but hey, uh, Easton, dude, thanks for, thanks for stopping in. Yeah, good luck uh, um, starting back at the local state school. Man, good luck starting back at school. <laughs> uh, Takano, yeah, I've been doing pretty decently. Uh, for sure, it isn't uh, old normal, but it's the new normal. Gonna have to head out for a bit, uh, though I may return later if you're still alive. Dude, thank you. Takano, hope you're doing good, man. Uh, always good to hear from you and keep keep positive attitude, dude. Good to see you. Um, Corpos, uh, Techno Tim, I wanted to ask, do you game from Proxmox only? <laughs> um, can you achieve 60 frames per second native alike experience? Or if I want uh, to game on a Windows, is there is it still better to have Windows 10 on bare metal as a separate machine? Okay, so a um, couple of questions there. Um, do you game from Proxmox only? I think the question right now is, do you even game, bro? That's that's kind of how I feel right now because I haven't. I mean, I I think like two weeks ago I played some Ori and I like sat on the couch for like 45 minutes and I'm like yeah, like you know, totally kicked back and tuned out. Um, I haven't done a ton lately, but I'm, I got some stuff coming. Um, but I don't, I don't only uh, game on, on, on Proxmox. So yes, I have a GPU pass through to one of my virtual machines, actually two. Um, and, and, and that's really to take advantage of the encoding chip on there. Not so much the GPU, but the stream encoder with NVENC for something else I do, a uh, little side project. Um, and so if I do game, uh, I mean, I, I have a Windows PC here and it's actually du dual booting Linux now. And so, um, you know, if, if I, Want a game? Uh, all my games are installed on this Windows machine too. Um, you know, in that video, that was kind of a proof of concept saying, hey, I, I really did this. Um, you can do it too. Um, here are some use cases, and then here's my use case. And so I talked about my use case at the end. Uh, everything else was more use cases for how you can use a GPU virtualized uh, because it's awesome. And some people don't think about the ways you can use it. You know, I, I'm only starting to discover today the more, uh, not today, the last eight days, what I've been working on, 
how many use cases there are for a GPU? Everybody thinks gaming, you know? And I think in my head, I've thought the last, you know, whatever, years, uh, I'd say two, two, three years, the line, in my head, I've been saying, okay, gaming plus, gaming plus what? Gaming plus streaming, gaming plus encoding, like the NVENC uh, chip that I get. And, you know, I've always heard about this thing called the CUDA, but really didn't know how it applied. And now I'm starting to really understand at how performant like AI and machine learning and all this stuff is uh, on a video card. And um, so, so anyways, another use case I've been totally just been blown away. It's, 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 it's like a foreign language to me is, you know, the, the use case for AI and ML. And so, um, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, which is another plus. And so now I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, you know, some people use their, their, their video card and you use it for whatever you want, right? You bought it and your use case is, is your own. But I, I think in my head, man, the people who only play games never use the encoder and never use CUDA. And then I'm like, okay, the people who play games and stream or do, you know, video encoding, um, use the GPU piece and the NVENC piece, but never use the CUDA. And I'm like, oh man, there's this whole, you know, potential uh, within your GPU that, that, you know, it, and I'll agree, it's, it's hard, it's dense, it's, the tooling is poor right now, but at the same time, it's like, you know, video card manufacturers, specifically NVIDIA, has been shipping, you know, CUDA cores with their video cards for a long time. I, and I feel like, man, they've been, uh, I don't want to say wasting money, <laughs> but you know, there's a very small percentage of people who actually use that piece. So anyways, a lot of great technology in there. Um, I, I, to answer your question directly without going on 15 tangents like I did, um, I do use a separate machine and it's not even a virtual machine, it's, it's bare metal. It's the one I'm streaming on now. This is kind of my, my everything machine. This is my development machine. This is my uh, video editing workstation. This is my streaming machine. This is my gaming machine. This is my dual boot to Linux to do other things machine. So yeah, a lot of, lot of stuff going on in this machine. I think when I upgrade, I, you know, I always thought I would sell this PC, but I might just keep it around as my dedicated something else machine, development machine or whatever, video encoding machine or whatever it tends to be. Um, because I learned the last week, I really, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm playing with fire uh, with some of the stuff that I'm installing and, and, and changing. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that I can still continue to do the other things I used to do and not uh, build myself into a corner. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but yeah, hope that answers your question. No route. Yeah, one gig is awesome. I've had one gig connection since 2013. Ooh, you were an early adopter. I love it. I love it. Let me grab a drink. Um, the provider is awesome too. Techs are uh, on a public IRC channel that you can just hit them up with anything to get done. I like this. This is grassroots. I love it. I love it. Smells sounds like a small business because I yeah I'm I'm all for that. JMO, we just moved out of the city uh, and not long ago ISP didn't even have any options out here. Oh that stinks. Uh, no route. Wait, so there's no ISP in your area? Yeah, that, that does sound for sure. Um, uh, C boy, C boy, uh, just put sound uh, isolation in corners. Yeah, yeah. So that that'll definitely help with echo. But but I have some. Uh, I have some bare walls too. And so, you know, not only does it hit other things, then it goes off some of the bare walls and comes back. Uh, so I, I have some stuff. Uh, I actually, a, a friend of mine hooked me up. He works for a company and he's like, here, here's a bunch of samples tailored to your room. Let me know. So I, I gotta get on that. But yeah, I ha have some stuff. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to hear it uh, coming forward or moving forward. Um, Geo, uh, what's the name of the artist again? Sorry, I'm so far behind. It's Harris Heller. Just Google Harris Heller. He's on Twitch. He's on YouTube, runs an alpha gaming channel. Um, and he has a ton of free music that's DMCA free that you can play anywhere, use anywhere, using your games, using your live stream, using your YouTube videos, use anywhere. Uh, and he's, uh, he's a pretty awesome dude. Um, Patrick, Patrick Drevel, <laughs> Drevel, uh, hi. Uh, the tech project uh i'm currently working on uh on is a game uh ue4 ultimate uh, unreal engine and i'm also learning this game engine right now nice yeah i haven't done any game engine stuff um we built actually a little uh totally lightweight stuff probably i don't know five six years ago just for fun for a hack weekend uh i did some stuff 
That's awesome. Uh, that's fantastic. I, I watch a, every now and then I'll, you know, put a Twitch channel on who's doing game dev because it's just, it's, it's, it's a totally different um, development than, than I'm used to. Uh, but sounds awesome. I, I wish I, I wish I would have gotten um, more involved earlier because I've loved games my whole life. Um, M Tetanus, uh, have you ever tried not uh, Nutanix? Nutanix CE, I have not, have not. Um, I thought you were gonna say Nautilus, but that's something else. No, I haven't, uh, tell me about it. Penguin Airlines, not much, man. Just trying to balance chores and home lab as always. Yeah, man, dude, I saw one of your last posts building a Raspberry Pi cluster and hooking up some SSDs, sounds awesome. Oh man, I'm caught up in the bulk SSD shopping as well. Yeah, that's what I was just mentioning. Uh, when are Pure Sands gonna hit home lab mainstream? Yeah, yeah, man, does sound awesome, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, to be able to boot and have storage remotely. Um, yeah, man, it sounds awesome. I, I want to see more pictures of your progress for sure. Um, darn, 1.5 petabytes. All right, I, I, I was gonna say P instead of B instead of you know. I, well, I don't even know what the bytes would be. Uh, well, I knew it wasn't bytes, and I knew it wasn't gig because that was too small. And then I thought, ah, oh, maybe terabytes, but oh man, petabytes, that is a lot to migrate. I hope it goes well. And again, curious how you validate that. Um, let's see, uh, Penguin Airlines, nice, a lot of EMC experience, even a Dell uh, compellent certification. Nice, oh, you guys are talking about storage, all right. NORAL, uh, the way I want a mail server migration is to have a uh, good fallback to an MX server, uh, then just disable the main mail server, copy everything over with rsync, update DNS, and enable the services on the new server. I'm using MailCal for a mail server. Nice, I hear lots about it. Uh, DNS, I'm moving from power DNS to power DNS. <laughs> just a new server, nice. Um, yeah, curious about that. I've never done any DNS migration. I would assume you would add another DNS server let it replicate, shut the old one down. Uh, I'm making this up. I'm making it sound way easier than it probably is. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it's something around then. Um, Twitch alert, 4.35, oh, 30 minutes late. Hey, that's okay. Uh, Thunderstorm, uh, taking the weekend off after getting Ansible to run Windows Update and install OpenSSH to use PowerShell to SSH into Linux boxes and vice versa. Let me break this one down. Uh, after getting Ansible to run Windows updates and install OpenSSH to use PowerShell to SSH into Linux boxes and vice versa. Nice, yeah, I, um, and, and part of all of the beta stuff I installed, I installed, and this isn't probably beta, but I installed PowerShell 7.5 and man, are things changing. It, it is, I mean, I get SSL right there. I'm like, yeah, this is starting to feel like Linux now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Microsoft is doing so much with PowerShell and you can run it, you know, on, on other things too, not only Windows. Um, D1 TV. Hey Tim, just getting into Home Lab, been watching a lot of your videos and learning uh, from your Discord. Had to stop by and say hello, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for stopping in, appreciate it. Oh, that, that, oh, see, that's my reminder. Um, that it, oh yeah, so this is the, I don't know if this is new word. Can I snooze this reminder? I'm gonna snooze it. I'll hit play again. Yeah, whatever that does. Does that give me another hour? Sure. Um, I do, I can't stay another hour, but I'll do it just in case. Um, yeah, that, that actually worked out well. Windows, alarm, and clock. Uh, that was a nice little tone too. Um, MK Lom, uh, hello. Uh, worked on an automated Docker firewall called UFW Docker Automated uh, on GitHub project from shinebayar-g. Uh, maybe this could be useful for some people because Docker and firewall is a pain right now, uh, but not anyone. <laughs> I hope this could help Docker security overall. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I've always wondered about, you know, who will create a firewall in Docker. <laughs> I guess there is one. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. PC Geek, did you get the 3090 installed yet? No, I haven't. I haven't. I've been holding out. I, I have this dependency chain and... Um, it, it is totally, uh, talk about scope creep, you know, from what I wanted to do with the 3090 turned into like 15 mini projects. And uh, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm run into a lot of dead ends with what I want to do, but I, I'm totally determined. And so every dead end just leads to another avenue and something to try. Um, and, and you guys know this, I'm basically, it's almost like I'm debugging and troubleshooting, um, you know, 15 different, avenues 
And when that one wears out or ends abruptly, I, I find another one. So I have another avenue to go down to try to get my thing working. So then I'll install the 3090. I'm not, that, that's my reward. That's my reward. But that's really when the, the, the real work begins. All this stuff I've been doing is dependencies. But no, I'm, I wish, you know, I feel like such a, I don't know. I, I'm super thankful I have one. Uh, but at the same time, I feel bad for not installing it. But it, it will be, it will be. I will make this work. Um, because I want to do something with it and uh, you know until I get my platform ready to do something I don't want to install it I don't want to like conflate the two things and start going down this other rabbit hole <laughs> I've been exploring one at a time um, let's see uh, Salvarius my experience with EMC is mainly on the service side they also they are so easy to service lol nice uh, Morvia uh, working on Ansible automation that boots up my VMs if not running patching them and shutting them down. Oh yeah, if they were shut down before, I like it. So how are you doing the boot up? I assume you're telling your hypervisor to turn on or using, um, you know, wake on LAN with a magic packet, doubt that. Uh, but I like it, I like it because I have some machines that kind of stay off. And now you got the gears turning because I was, I was, you know, I've had this idea about booting up a machine temporarily just to back up things and sync it but not keep it on all day and shut it down. You know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm going totally draconian on this thing. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll configure the BIOS and do all this stuff. But no, I can just, I can just orchestrate all that with Ansible. But I need Ansible running all the time, and I think there are solutions for that too. Um, Home Lab new. Wow, the HDMI capture card. Yeah, I'm trying to. Why I'm trying a wide set of capture cards with my Linux setup. I'm trying to get an Elgato 4K, which is having issues with Linux, and Avermedia UVC one and cheap no name Chinese one. LOL. Yes, that card's not cheap. And uh, I, yeah, there, there are four inputs on it. You know, it's, it's a little over $100 per input. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's not cheap. Uh, but there's another one by a larger, you know, company that's almost double the price. And so when I, that's what I was going up against. You know, I had very few options. So I'm like, okay, I'll do the one that's cheaper. Not cheap, not cheap for sure, but uh, it's, lots of capability. And so they might have a single or a dual. And if they do, um, yeah, works with Linux. I, I was running it this morning. Um, <laughs> Mom, I'm sub. Thank you for the gifted sub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was from, um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Oh, who gifted that? I don't know. It might have been gifted earlier. <laughs> JMO, the problem with Rancher Server is the main container always restarts, uh, even with a really small load on it. That's interesting. Um, I think it's just the fact that I'm running on a hard drive is the issue, but for now I can't really go with SSDs, but the issue is usually with ephemeral storage. Uh, but if it can be fixed without the swap for a short term, I would be really happy. Interesting. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I mean, it might be resources. I'm not sure. You should look at the logs in that container when it does reboot or look at, you know, look at, look at some logs. I know that those things are kind of hard to find sometimes, um, but the old container, if it's still there, if it's spun up a new one, should be there and you should be able to run a docker logs against that container and see what it said last um no route oh yeah i almost forgot we're surviving curfew here in the netherlands it started today uh from 11 to 4 30. oh man that's a that's a late curfew no that's uh that's uh 20 that's 10 o'clock oh man but that's uh and then that's an early curfew uh in the morning um no wrong. Not that I was planning on going anyway, uh, but it's still weird. I could find uh, I could be fine for going outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling. Uh, Choiway. Uh, Saturdays are for messing with Doom <laughs> with Doom Emacs to see if I like it for the tenth time. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I uh, I feel that way with like you know. I I feel that way with a lot of things. Like I revisit things and I think it's going to be better. Like every time I go to install you know, a different Linux distribution for desktop. I'm like, yeah, Ubuntu, yeah. And then I'm like, oh yeah, Pop! OS, okay, Pop! OS. And then, you know, name your other thing, Ubuntu Budgie. And, you know, I, I keep hopping distributions just thinking like, maybe this one's better or maybe I'll like it this time. And uh, I usually end up going back to the same one. But anyways, I hope for the 10th time you figure out if you like it for sure. Uh, Swedish, uh, just a simple to do web app uh, using the Mern stack, nice. Um, Got Docker support working too. Nice. Uh, yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm familiar with the Mern stack, so yeah, you're you're well on your way. So you have separated your front end, back end. 
uh, what, Mongo Express React Node? Awesome, man. Yeah, that's uh, right up my alley. Well, I hope it uh, hope it works out for you. CI stuff is is not that hard. Um, you just got to think about it, you know, uh, a little bit different. If you, if you're a developer and haven't done, um, you know, any kind of DevOps type of work or CI or automation work, you, it's just a little bit of a shift, uh, but not bad. And awesome once you get it running, because then you know, a git commit push or a git commit tag or however you release your code uh, can deploy it all the way out to somewhere. Um, you know, in, in a short period of time. So it's awesome. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Simon, I got it right this time. Have you ever played with security onion? I haven't. Uh, how much focus do you put on your network uh, security segmentation, uh, Simon? Um, I haven't played with onion. I'm familiar with what it is and what it does. Uh, I haven't played with it yet. Uh, I, I should, um, you know, how much, you know, how much focus do I put on, uh, security and segmentation um a lot more than i used to um and that was part of my network upgrade so you know prior to this network upgrade i divided things up by network so i didn't use vlans but i use you know network segmentation basically uh subnets um and then after this upgrade i i i, I moved to vlans and um you know, I, I put a lot of thought ahead of time into what VLANs I would, so I did a lot of, I guess, network planning, uh, what VLANs I wanted, um, what types of devices were on there, you know, physical, physical, virtual, and then what types of data they had, and then where they had access to. And so, yeah, I, I, I did put a lot of thought and time into it, you know, and, that, and that's even evolved since my original network plan. Um, and, you know, I have VLANs for certain things. I have an IoT one, I have a trusted one, I have an untrusted one, I have camera one. And so yeah, I, I put a lot of thought up front um, just in case, you know, I, you know, um, these things could happen. And so, you know, for me, it's just a security measure. And it's also, you know, an optimization measure for me too. Um, so that like all machines aren't all on this same subnet broadcasting the same stuff. Uh, or different things and everyone listening and responding. Um, so yeah, and, and I mean, then there's other tools in place to, 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 to analyze, to make sure that those things are doing what they should do. And I did a ton of stuff up front too, after I got it in place or a ton of manual testing to make sure, you know, I'd hop on each VLAN. Can I ping this? Can I ping that? Can I not ping this? Are these firewall rules actually working? Because it's one thing, you know, uh, to implement something and then it's another thing to to assert to make sure it's doing what it should be doing and so you know I, going back to when i keep asking people this question how do, how do you ensure it's doing what it's doing uh for me in this scenario it was hopping on each vlan and trying to do certain things and so yeah all of my all of my vlans are segmented um there's only one trusted and from there i can on my machine i can get to any one um other than that, then there's a ton of like individual rules. You know, I poke holes in firewall rules for VLANs to make sure that, you know, they can get to certain things they need to get to and, and nothing else. And then, you know, firewall rules, you can go as granular as you want. So most of the time mine are IPM port, not just IP. You know, I restrict it down to port. If you really wanted to go even lower, you could do IP Mac and port um, too, which is, is another option. And there's tons of ways, right? There's tons of ways you can do this. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my current state right now. Uh, D1, uh, D1T, uh, how do you think something like Pi-hole fits into a more advanced with PFSense, Sophos, XG, UDM Pro? Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of where I'm living right now. So, um, you know, Pi-hole is my DNS system. So it's not just my ad blocker. It's also my DNS system. And, um, you know, I, 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 I made a conscious decision, you know, uh, a couple of months ago to start switching over to all DNS. <laughs> and, you know, that can that can go either way, as we all know. Um, because I was using a lot of IP addresses before, um, you know, when, uh, and IP addresses, don't get me wrong, are, are great until they change, you know. And so I have a lot of custom services I wrote, you know, things you see running all around here were all IP based. And that was great until it wasn't anymore. <laughs> after my network upgrade. And so during that time when I started planning my new network, I also started to think about DNS because I'm like, I don't want to have to deal with this again. And, and I get it like, you know, it, it, 
if I only had to change it in one place, that would be fine. But, you know, I have a lot of custom code that used to reference IP addresses and that all changed. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, I need to make this change in so many places. And what if I want these machines to be dynamic anyways? Um, so that's when I switched to DNS. And, uh, you know, the easiest way for me to get, you know, local DNS here internally uh, was to use something I was using already, which was Pi-hole. So many of you run Pi-hole and you might just use it for ad blocking. I also use it for local DNS. And recently I just started using CNames too. And I know CNames can be, you know, a, a little bit confusing. Um, you know, uh, like why not just create a, another DNS record, you know, which you can do an A record if you want. But I started using CNames because I have services that run on those hosts that I don't want to refer to those um, services as the host name. And so, you know, a, a good example is that is if you start doing reverse proxy stuff, um, you know, and, and, and you want to send um, uh, uh, traffic to a load balancer, you know, you, you probably don't want to make it that load balancer name, but you know the load balancer IP and that might have a DNS record. And then, so I create DNS aliases uh, on that record. Uh, for all my individual host names. So I can do, you know, reverse proxy stuff there. Tons of use cases, but that's where, that's the biggest one that I use it for. So anyways, how does it fit in? Um, however you want it to. Uh, you know, I'm a, I, I've been a huge fan of Pi-hole. I, I know there are alternatives out there. I'm just a fan of, you know, the UI. I used to run it on a Raspberry Pi 2, ran it on Pi Zero for a long time, is more than capable. Um, but you know, I've, yeah, just, huge fan and and once i started doing dns stuff became more of a fan and then alias stuff too and then figuring out how to sync them has just been been a ton of fun so and uh there's probably more powerful dns systems out there but i didn't want to spin up yet another system uh when i thought that you know pi hole could address most of my my dns needs here at home hey vez vez vezer thanks for the follow appreciate it welcome how you doing um so yeah d1 Ho hopefully that helps uh, let's see, Penguin Airlines. Whoa, what does Iron <laughs> Firmware do? Yeah, I, I, I agree too. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of there too. And uh, man, I, I, I hate to do this, but I, I do need to kind of wrap things up. So I'm gonna look for just mentions. I know I said it was gonna be a short one today, uh, but I am gonna look for mentions just to make sure that if someone directly mentioned me, I'm sure you guys, you know, didn't mention me, uh, but I do gotta wrap things up uh, just because I, yeah, I, I have some things to take care of, but I wanna make sure I take care of mentions. Um, Penguin Airlines, uh, could you do a video on using Pi-hole as primary DNS? Hey, this was the perfect timing. I promise I didn't plan that. Um, so could you do a video on uh, using Pi-hole as primary DNS uh, and backing up configuration, all the dirty backend stuff? Um, yeah, possibly. Um, so if you, so, um, so the way that I back up Pi-hole now, uh, now uh, is using Gravity Sync. Um, Penguin Airlines. And so if you haven't seen my, my video on Gravity Sync, how to keep two pie holes in synchronization, you don't need to watch it. The only takeaway you need to know is that Gravity Sync also does backups of your uh, of your pie hole instance. And um, I know you can do it in, in pie hole as well, uh, but Gravity Sync can do it and it can do it remotely too, um, if you like, or you could execute it on a schedule, grab those files off. So there's a couple different ways, um, but you know, local DNS is no more than just binding, you know, an IP uh, to a, 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 a record. And then, I mean, you know this, and then uh, making sure that search domain is enabled for the network that you're on now. So that if you don't refer to it by, you know, full, fully qualified, you know, name, it, it can still resolve that way too. Kind of got to be careful with that though. Sometimes I learned in, in Kubernetes, sometimes it, it'll start appending that to everything. And so I, <laughs> there's some, there. There, there be dragons in there with Kubernetes sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, maybe I can, maybe I can, or, or if you, if you want to do it, uh, the gravity sync way that supports backing up your database and all your stuff too, for sure. Uh, TLJ games, uh, video on hosting two sets of K3 of another serve, uh, in one rancher. Is this possible? Let me try to figure this out. Uh, video on hosting two sets of K3S on another server in one rancher. Is this possible? So I think, um, I, I think, well, I'm, I'm gonna guess, but I think you mean just managing multiple Kubernetes clusters or K3S clusters using one rancher? Um, yeah, totally possible. I mean, that, that's why, that part of the reason why ranchers exist is to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters 
um, most people in, in our circle are just managing one cluster and then most people in our circle too are just managing one node. Uh, but you can take it as far as you wanna go. You can manage lots of Kubernetes clusters in lots of different clouds and spin them up. And you have some options there. You know, you can either adopt new clusters um, with Rancher or you can spin up new clusters uh, with Rancher too. So you have some options there. Um, but yeah, that, that's, um, you know, that's part of why Rancher exists to manage multiple clusters. I mean, you might see the local cluster and then the cluster you created and you can spin up more and more clusters. And those machines don't have to be on the same machine, on the same network, in the same cloud. They can be anywhere uh, as long as they can communicate over certain ports. But yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like, uh, Pyle, I feel like Gravity Sync is HA, not backup. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, they do include a backup script there too. So yeah, ch check it out. Um, they have a backup command that you can run that'll dump all your stuff out and a restore command that you can run. Uh, so it's it's more than just HA, but yeah, for sure. Uh, Thunderstorm 9199, Techno Tim, keep, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I, I apologize for cutting this short. I said at the beginning it was gonna be a little short and I think my Windows alarm thing that I set up actually worked out pretty good, uh, went off almost a half hour ago. So I do got to wrap it up. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for, for tuning in. I, I apologize again for making this short. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Um, thank you so much. There was follows, there was bits, there was subs. There was a lot of great conversation. I wish I had time to, to talk through because man, I, I, uh, I, I recharge from reading all of your comments and talking about these things and thinking it like exercises my brain uh, in, in a different way, and I, re I really appreciate it. Hopefully, hopefully it's interesting to you too. Hey, follow right there at the end. Vaster, Vaster me, Vaster Mitch. Hey, thanks for follow. Appreciate it. Um, I will be back on Tuesday. Um, yeah, man, and uh, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, have a great weekend. Um, yeah, take care, and uh, as always, be good to each other. Take care, guys.